الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله ارسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا وداعيا الى الله باذنه وسراجا منيرا اما بعد فقد قال الله تعالى في القران المجيد والفرقان الحميد اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ولله ولله على الناس حج البيت من استطاع اليه سبيلا صدق الله العظيم وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بني الاسلام على خمس شهادة ان لا اله الا الله واقامة الصلاة وايتاء الزكاة وصوم رمضان وحج البيت او كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم honorable listeners Allah Azza wa Jal in his infinite wisdom and mercy allows us to gather here on this most mubarak day friday for a believer is not a friday friday is the day of the week but jumu'a is special for a believer the occasion of jumu'a is special look at all of us we are gathered here today because it is jumu'a Jumu'a for us is not just another day of the week. In fact, Jumu'a has greater significance to a certain extent than even the day of Eid. The great value of Jumu'a can never be underrated. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has allowed us and is allowing us to convene here in this season. And when I refer to season, I'm not referring to our seasons of the year, summer, winter, autumn. But we are referring to the season of Hajj. There may be brothers in this community, in this masjid, or in our families, or in our social circles, that are getting ready to leave for Hajj. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, just over a week ago, closed all visas to those who wanted to do Umrah in order to prepare for the throngs of people who are coming to perform the Hajj. From the ayah of the Qur'an al-Kareem, I have quoted before you an ayah. In this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a very peculiar and specific method that Allah describes Hajj. And then from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I have quoted that hadith that we are all aware of. That Islam is based on five pillars. And we all know this. We've been learning this. Our children have learned it from the time we are in grade one or in class one. Shahadatu Allah ilaha illallah. The first pillar of Islam is our, is our iman. La ilaha illallah, there is none worthy of worship except Allah. <coughs> Secondly, it is to establish salah. Then it is the discharging of our financial obligations, zakah. And then it is the fasting of the month of Ramadan. And some people are still experiencing the sweetness of that by fasting in this month of Shawwal, six fasts after the month of Ramadan. If a person keeps that, then this person receives the reward of having fasted for the entire year. And then lastly, we come to Hajj. Now when we look broadly at these pillars of Islam, and these are pillars, like a building requires pillars to be kept upright, walls, pillars. The building of Islam is contingent on these pillars, in the absence of which 
There is no deen. There is no Islam. Buniya al-Islam ala khamsin. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said that Islam is supported by these five pillars. Iman. Iman is necessary all the time. It is fard all the time. There is not a moment in the life of a believer when they, we, will, we'll, we will be allowed to be absent of Iman. Iman needs to be present in us 24-7 by 365. But we are Muslims, so we'll say 355. Because our Islamic calendar has 355 days. And in fact, on this note, I'd just like to digress to mention that as believers, as reciters of the kalima la ilaha illallah, as the bondsmen and bondswomen of Allah, as the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, let us make an attempt as regularly as possible to bring our lives to be more Islamic. What does this mean? It means that when we remember our dates of birth, we probably, many of us, may not even know what our Islamic date of birth is. Let us at least start with that, that my Islamic date of birth is the 23rd of Rajab 1394. We should all know what our Islamic dates of birth are. Which when people ask us, what, what is your age? We should rather give our Islamic age because Islamic, we are Muslim. That, is, that should uh, uh, be first and foremost in our minds. When we start a new job, whatever it is, let us try to remember the Islamic dates. So Iman is fard all of the time. Then Salah is fard every day, five times a day. Then the discharging of our zakah is fard annually on the date on which we accrued our nisab of zakat. That will be our anniversary. Yes, many people may synchronize that with the month of Ramadan for ease and also in order to obtain a higher reward. There is no problem with that. And then there is our fasting in the month of Ramadan. Fard every year for those whom Allah Azza wa Jal grants the health to fast. And then we have Hajj. Unlike our Iman, not fard all the time. Unlike performance of our Salah, not fard every day, not five times a day. Unlike our Zakah, which is, which is also not fard every year. If we have the finances, unlike fasting in the month of Ramadan, Hajj is not fard every year. Hajj is fard only once in a lifetime. What an opportunity it must be when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants this person the ability to fulfill that pillar of Islam upon which the building of Islam rests, yet is fard only once in a lifetime. Yes, we are all encouraged to perform nawafil hajj, optional hajj, as many times as we are allowed to or we can, or our financial status will allow us to. Yet when we look at hajj, hajj is extremely special. First of all, when we look at these pillars of Islam, we will realize that there is no surah that is named after Iman. There is no surah to Iman. There is no surah to Salah. There is no salah that, surah that is dedicated, no chapter in the Quran dedicated to Salah. There is no chapter of the Quran, no surah that is dedicated to Zakah or named after it. There is no chapter of the Quran, no surah that is named after and dedicated to fasting in the month of Ramadan. Yet there is a surah in the 17th Jews of the Quran that is called Suratul Hajj. A, an entire surah named after and dedicated to that one pillar of Islam that is fard only once in our lives. And when Allah Azza wa Jal addresses us, commanding us to fulfill all of the other pillars of Islam, Allah uses words like Aminu, believe. 
Allah uses words like aqimu salah establish salah Allah uses words like atu zakah discharge your zakah Allah uses words like sumu fast in the month of Ramadan yet when it comes to hajj this one fard pillar of Islam Allah terms it as follows in the verse that I quoted right at the beginning walillahi ala nas hajjul bayt Allah brings into it his own name Allah attributes hajj to himself that hajj is for Allah yes everything is for Allah but to highlight the importance of it to highlight the fact that this is the culmination of everything in our lives that is why hajj must be performed in in a mature state of mind a person must be ready for hajj not just financially yes financially as well hajj is a is a great sacrifice it is a great aspect iman does not cost us a single cent in fact there is no physicality in iman it is the utterance of the tongue the belief in the heart and then yes the rest of islam is what flows through our limbs that will do for the rest of our lives but talking about the pillars of islam iman then salah is a physical act of worship we do this physically with our bodies zakah is a financial ibadah there is not much physical aspect to it many times in this technologically advanced world in which we live we will go online on our apps into our banking site we will decide how much of zakah must go away we will choose the beneficiary or the recipient and at the click of a button our zakah will be discharged yet it is preferable that when we discharge our zakah we go out in search of a recipient that is eligible to receive zakah and then give our zakah in that way but yet it is accepted like this as well and then fasting in the month of ramadan is a very physical act of worship and requires great sacrifice and now when we look at hajj subhanallah one of the cheapest and most inexpensive packages of hajj exceeds 100000 rands per person and when a person has to go for hajj a person needs to ensure primarily that ideally all of our debts have been settled a person has no financial obligations that this person still owes so and so so much of money etc however in the event that a person does then this person is required to obtain consent from his or her creditor that i have been accredited to go for hajj do i have your permission to delay my payment of hajj and to delay my payment uh, my loan my debt to you so that i may go ahead and fulfill my obligation of hajj with the commitment that upon returning the debt will be repaid that the loans that were taken will be repaid and now when it comes to hajj hajj is a combination of so many aspects financially it is a great thing there's so much of money some people save up their entire lives the entire life savings goes into saving up for this one journey of hajj because it is that important then when we are in hajj indeed if we fulfill our hajj in the closest way to sunnah the walking hajj then it is indeed a physical strain on the body as well the walking hajj to walk from makkatul mukarrama to the plains of mina to remain there for that day then to walk the next next day to arafat now trees are growing there but if not then we are standing 
in the sweltering heat, begging, pleading, and beseeching Allah Azza wa Jal, most importantly for the needs of our deen and our akhirah. And yes, we should make dua for our dunya as well. The Quran tells us, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةِ وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةِ وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ That oh Allah, grant us the good in this world. فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةِ وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةِ And grant us the good in the hereafter as well. وَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ And save us from the fire of Jahannam. So there is that aspect. And then sleeping out in the plains of Muzdalifa, under the stars, for a short period of time, after which a person then commences dua again. The wuquf of Muzdalifa will take place then. And then to go on to perform all the other rites of Hajj, the rami of the shayateen, the jamarat, the sacrificing of an animal, that is not qurbani, that is a sp specific to Hajj. So there is a combination of aspects. It is physical. It is spiritual. It is financial. All of these culminate and come together in Hajj. And Allah says, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ For Allah alone. When we do, when we consider our Iman, Iman is about recognition. A person now starts to recognize Allah. In any relationship, there is progression, there are stages, there are darajat. A person first recognizes somebody. After that, a relationship is built. After that comes various stages of love and commitment and attachment. With Iman comes the recognition. We have recognized Allah. La ilaha illallah. There is none worthy of worship besides Allah. And then, five times a day, we start building our relationship with Allah. And in any relationship, there needs to be sacrifice. And there's commitments. When we love someone, we are prepared to sacrifice for that someone, for that special someone. When we love someone, then we feel wanting, even though not necessarily, we want to gift that person with something. We cannot possibly gift Allah, but for Allah, we can spend. This is zakah. This now starts... The, the, the love with Allah because we are taking out from that which we have earned and worked very hard for and we're giving that for Allah and not just it does not just end at zakah which is two and a half percent but when a person spends more than they are obligated to then that is where the love starts and then in the month of Ramadan is another expose of our love and our attachment to Allah. The love now starts to increase. Because for Allah, without anybody looking, without anybody watching, this person remains hungry despite the thirst, despite the hunger. Many people will say despite the anger as well. They say a hungry man is. We all know. And then after all of that, with a brief meal at Sihri, a brief meal at Iftar, for Allah, in the month of Ramadan, we perform an additional 20 rakat of salah. If it was not for the love of Allah, why would we do it? So the love increases. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ Those people who have iman, they do not just... It is not just lip service, I love you. No, it is an embodiment we dedicate everything to Allah with everything that we have. Ashaddu hubbal lillah. We have intense love for Allah, which ulama has referred to as ishq. That a person is deeply in love with Allah. Can any one of us say 
that I am deeply in love with Allah, we will say that about our spouses. We will say that about our children. I love my children. The things that I do for my children are of love. The things that I do for my spouse, for my wife, out of love. Mothers say this a lot easier. That I love my children and the sacrifices that I have made because I love my child. Sleepless nights, without meals, without caring for their personal well-being. A mother, if you want to see love, look at the way a mother looks after her child. That is love. That is why when Allah talks about His love, Allah says that 70 times more love than a mother will ever be able to exhibit for her child is the love that Allah has for us. 70 times more. And then we come to Hajj. Subhanallah. We leave everything aside. We leave our homes, we leave our comfort, we leave everything that we know. We go to a foreign land, we go to a foreign place, we stay with strangers, we do things that we have never done before. Tawaf around the Baytullah, presenting ourselves at the road of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We are wrapped and dressed in what essentially resembles our coffin for the men. Two sheets of cloth where there is absolutely no distinguishing and differentiation between the wealthy and the, and the, and the poverty stricken. No distinguishing between the Arabs and the non-Arabs. No distinguishing between the healthy and the sick, the wealthy and the poor, the tall and the short, the dark and the fair. Everybody is dressed in exactly the same garb. For who else and why else would we sacrifice so much? Walillahi ala nas. It is for Allah. Being dressed in our kafan is supposed to remind us that we are supposed to be preparing for our departure from this dunya, for our meeting with Allah. When we study the verses of Surah Al-Hajj, and with this I will need to conclude, my time has almost lapsed. And with, this, with these verses we'll conclude. Allah Azza wa Jal says, Ya ayyuhal nasu taqu rabbakum. O people, imbue within yourselves taqwa. There is no time to even discuss taqwa. And then Allah just depicts the scene of the day of Qiyamah in the opening verses of Surah Al-Hajj because the manner in which we are standing on the plains of Arafat is the manner in which we will congregate before Allah on the day of Qiyamah. That is our eventual and eternal place. That is where we will be. That is what we need to prepare for. That is what the, the, these are the sentiments that we need to return with. And even though this year the vast majority of us will not be performing Hajj, it is necessary for us to refresh these lessons so that you and I may be prepared and may prepare ourselves and may turn to Allah every year, every, every opportunity that we have. Oh Allah, accept me for Hajj. And then, O oh Allah, accept my hajj from me. Wa akhiru da'wana. Anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.